Good morning everyone and welcome to my vlog. Right, so I'm actually going to try a slightly more daily format. I don't know if I'm actually going to do daily stuff, but I don't know, just more of a, a daily diary. Um, I'm just waiting for my mum. We're going for a, a dog walk with uh, Albie, the fluffy maniac. And then um, I will talk about whatever I'm going to talk about today, which I don't know yet what that is. Probably the fact that it's September. I'm not, no, it's not, it's October. See, Freudian slip. You know, apparently September was the warmest September ever by like some huge margin. And there's a bunch of very worried scientists out there, which, you know, and then you've got people on the other side of the spectrum who are going, oh, it's all a hoax. It's just natural variation. Well, can it naturally variate the other way then, please? Because as far as I know, as far as I can remember, all it's done for the last 30, 40 years is get warmer. Anyway, yeah, that's what we'll talk about. Speak later though, because I've got to walk the dog and, you know, so that's already enough of a handful, aren't you, LB? Yes, fluffy, but a handful. Oh, great. Mum will really appreciate that. So I've got my sleeves. Sleeves rolled up and everything. It's about 20 degrees, 21 degrees. And it's the, what is it, the 7th of August or something? Yeah, 7th of August. More Freudian slips. 7th of October. That's the crazy thing. Uh, I mean, I will get colder, I'm sure. Although we've had, a we've had some very mild winters recently. It's all actually quite worrying. I mean, obviously in the UK, provided the North Atlantic drift doesn't shut down, we'll be fine. You know, in fact, better than fine. But globally, it's very, very worrying. And I was thinking about it as I was running back to the house to get more uh, dog poo bags, randomly enough, which are biodegradable. Really, I think sort of, you know how like they label food with a, a sort of, um, you know, the, the stats on calories and salts and things like that. So you can make an informed choice as to whether this food is going to be good for you or not. I think they should do something similar with, well, basically everything that people buy, everything that's consumable, everything that's not, you know, even things like this camera, everything. They should put a sustainability rating on it. And I would suggest that that should be from zero to one. So let's say you have something that is fully recyclable. You know, it's an old plastic bag made from old plastic bags. It's not gonna get a rating of one unless the energy required to do that recycling is all, uh, you know, fully renewable. And even then it won't get a rating of one unless the energy that's fully recyclable, the infrastructure for setting that up also was fully sustainable. So it's, you know, do you see what I mean? It's a sort of a sustainability rating. I think that's what would be a really, really good idea for society so that people can actually start to vote with their wallets a little bit on what's going to be something that we can keep doing as a species, because there's a lot of us on this planet you know, and the numbers keep going up and basically nothing we do, absolutely nothing is sustainable at the moment. It's all going to end in having run out of some vital resource eventually. Obviously that won't actually happen because what will actually happen is we will swap to doing something else with the new technology or, a, you know, like for example, fuel, you know, as we started to run out of fuel, engines got more and more efficient and we found more and more innovative ways to access other oil reserves. The end result is the time when we fully run out of oil just keeps sort of slowly getting pushed back. It won't be able to be pushed back forever unless we completely stop using it, but that is probably what will happen. So there will probably always be some oil reserves that are accessible. Hang on a second. You right, mum? Are we going somewhere? Are we going get a coffee? Cool. Yeah, so that's that's what I what I think, a sustainability rating. Because I should not be sunbathing at the beginning of October. I can't believe it. It actually feels warm outside. Actually warmer than in the house. <laughs> kind of worrying. Uh, yeah, I mean I suppose given the time of year, 
the nights are still quite chilly, but it's just, apparently some parts of the UK are gonna be 26 degrees over the weekend. At the beginning of October. And you know what's really worrying about this, right? Is not just this year, because if it was just this year, you'd be like, oh, well, whatever. It's just an outlier, right? The problem is we seem to get an outlying year every two or three years. That is, global climates should not change this quickly. Not unless there's something driving it. I wonder what that could be. Anyway, right, I'm putting my solar panel out now. Doing my bit. So the sustainability rating on this would probably be quite low because I'm fairly sure none of it is recyclable. None of it is made from anything recycled. And the energy that went into producing it in China was almost certainly coal. So there we go. But every time I actually charge the battery up and use it, it gets ever so slightly more sustainable. Ever so slightly. <laughs> okay, so it's more for the more for the fun of it, to be honest. But I'll tell you one thing, it does actually teach you quite a lot about energy, having a, a small little thing like this, when you know you charge up the battery and you can see how long it takes to charge for how much area of solar panels, and then you can see what you can use that power for, which in this case is probably charging my phone a couple of times. Anyway, back to work I go. Got a website to sort out for my brother. Off to get lunch, I'm starving hungry. And uh, I'm just gonna get a quick sandwich from the village shop because I don't really have time for anything else right at this moment. Stir fry for supper though, so that'd be nice. Anyway, um, oh yes, Elon Musk. Now this, maybe not the world's most sustainable activity, but he's uh, preparing to launch Starship for the second time, like the full stack. Apparently, and this is uncharacter, well, is it uncharacteristically optimistic? He's not usually this optimistic, actually, to be fair. He is saying it's got about a 60% chance of being successful, which is, yeah, higher than usual. So what would I say constitutes success with this second launch? Um, well, to be honest, if it doesn't destroy the launch pad again, then that will be a big improvement. And also, probably the engine reliability. Now, this, they're actually going to do a hot fire separation with this. So they light the Starship's engines whilst it's still connected to the booster underneath. Sounds interesting. The Russians have been into um, hot staging for ages, so that's uh, fine. I don't know if that's going to work or not. It's the first time they've tried it on any rocket, so the whole thing could just explode. But it would be nice if prior to that explosion potential, uh, they uh, actually managed to keep most of the first stage boosters engines on. And I'm hoping Having a proper deluge system will help with that because it'll sort of mean that the engines aren't subjected to so much of a sort of violent force underneath them when they ignite. Uh, I think those, those are the two things I'd really like to see out of this second launch. And we'll see if that actually happens or not. Some point in the future, they haven't actually confirmed exactly when they're going to try it, but I get the impression it could be any day now. So that's cool. Not exactly sustainable, of course, though, is it? But the truth is, when it comes to sustainability, what you've got to look at is, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, can it be sustainable? And the answer is yes. The rocket fuel can be synthesized from the atmosphere with the judicious application of energy, of course. And the energy for that can come from renewable sources. And, you know, the steel that makes the rocket and all the rest of it can be processed steel, you know, reprocessed, recycled. So yeah, I mean, it can be sustainable. Don't know, I mean, will it ever be? Probably one day, actually, to be honest. But that's how I think we're all gonna need to start thinking about things. Otherwise, it's, uh, the climate is going to look pretty dire in a hundred years if it carries on like this. And what makes it worse is, it could carry on after that hundred years. It could carry on like this for a thousand years. And that's when you start to think, yeah, 
we're gonna have to do something. Right, I'm going to um, get back on with work now, I think. So I hope you've all enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram and X if you like, links in the description. I wanna say a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.